Hi. A friend asked, could I have a look at his um, eight channel network video recorder? Now, this is for CCTV cameras. And what you do is you plug the uh, CCTV cameras into the port at the back here. And it records and lets you uh, view them on the internet. Now, what happened with this, uh, back in November 21, when we had Storm Arwen, he ended up where he was without power for about uh, four or five days. And the power went on and off a few times. And this went off and just never came back on. Uh, and I think in the meantime, the electric company provided the uh, village with a backup generator that was running the whole village. So I don't know whether the problem is with the power supply or whether the problem is with this unit. So what we'll do is we'll plug it on and uh, we'll see what it does. Right, so let's plug some power into the power adapter. Oh, there's a green light, you can just see there on the power adapter there. So, we'll presume that's working. It's got a 4 prong 48 volt. I heard a little bit of a click when it uh, plugged in there. And the light's still on. But we don't have any light on the uh, unit itself. Now, I know he's already taken the screws out of this because he's removed the hard drive. So, we'll remove the lid and see what we can see. Right, what have we got in here then? I'll zoom out down a bit so we can have a look. You have to excuse the state of my hands here because I've been uh, busy trying to half rebuild the engine on my car. So uh, they're a little bit uh, worse for wear, let's see. Right, so what have we got going on in here then? So this looks like where the power comes in. And I've just noticed there. Um, let's see if I can zoom down a little bit more there. Let's move this board along. It looks like... There's a piece of this chip missing here. I might need to bring the microscope in on this so we can have a bit of a, a closer look. Um, let's see if we get any voltage around here. But uh, I'd say that uh, definitely doesn't look good. And I presume this is the ground. So let's have a look and score one of these caps here. Right, so we've got 48 volts coming into there. That's the ground, obviously. And I guess this is going to be the output. And we've got nothing on there. So I think uh, we need to investigate this area around about here. Right, I'll bring the microscope in and we'll uh, investigate a bit further. So this is the uh, IC there. I can't quite uh, see the number on it. I'll just try angling the board a bit. I might have to use just the focus slightly. Uh, it looks like five, four, three, six, zero B. I think that is. Uh, can't see any damage to the tracks or anything around there. It just looks like. Uh, it just looks like that leg, I'll just point to it here, it just looks like that leg there is just uh, totally blown through. Now the thing is, has it uh, taken anything else out further down the uh, down the circuit? Uh, right. We'll have a quick look over the board I think, I'll just uh, refocus the microscope and we'll have a bit... Uh, We'll have a little bit of look around, see if we can see any signs of damage elsewhere. Well, I can't see any other problems in the immediate area. So I think what we'll do is we'll remove that uh, chip. I 
see if we can order another one. First thing I want to do is apply a bit of flux just around here. And then we'll get the rework station in. Right, so that took a little bit getting off. I think it's because the uh, chip has got one of those uh, pads at the bottom of it, uh, like a heatsink pad. And obviously that was uh, soldered onto here which was taking uh, all the heat away from the rework station and I think uh, that capacitor has got a bit hot as well because it's uh, got a bit of a bulge in it now so we'll look, luckily that didn't uh, yeah luckily that didn't uh, go pop I'm going to have to replace that now yeah it took a bit more getting off than what I thought that did so I'm going to apply some leaded solder to these pads and then uh, clean it off with some Solder wick. Right, we'll give that a bit of a clean up with some uh, IP, some isopropyl alcohol, and a, a cotton bud. put some fresh leaded solder on there now just ready for when we sold up the new chip on So one of the things that I'm uh, wondering is uh, has this chip just failed or has something else blown elsewhere or is the I don't know some kind of other fault that caused that chip uh, to blow so I think we'll uh, test a few components just around about this area just to see uh, See if there's anything else going on. There's a big diode here, and that seems to measure short. But I'm not sure whether that's connected to this inductor here. Uh, where's the contacts on that there? So, I've got some small capacitors here. which also measure short so that's not a good sign they measure short they measure short hmm. well this isn't looking too good is it there's definitely some kind of short somewhere else on the board so it has this chip failure caused the problem or has the problem caused this chip to fail that's the thing um, I think what I might do is hook the bench power supply up to this we'll try injecting I don't know um, one volt or something at an amp into one side of this capacitor and I'll get the thermal camera out and we'll uh, we'll see what uh, what gets hot. Mm -hmm. 
a few moments later. Right, so I've got the uh, bench power supply on and I've got a ground wire just uh, connected to here. I've got the thermal camera set up and I've got the probe here. So all I'll do is I'll record a video at the same time on the uh, on the phone of what's going on. So, right, so you can see the capacitor there that I'm just touching and that's it on the uh, thermal camera. Let's move this meter out very slightly. That's those pads are there. And that's the IC that I removed. So I'll just get a view round about here and I'll try injecting some voltage just onto this capacitor. And there's something getting hot just there. I'll just do that again. So, this component here, which is that diode that was measuring short. So I think we'll uh, remove that next. I'll just switch that bench power supply off. And stop the uh, camera here. Now this is the uh, infrared or X-Infrared P2 Pro. And it's, uh, it's quite good. A company actually sent me this for free. So uh, I'm quite pleased with it. Right, um, I might just use the iron to take that off. Let's just see if we can get that off with the iron. Let's put a bit of fresh solder on it. Let's grab some tweezers. There we go. Right. Diode check, and we'll uh, yeah. So that's definitely short. Let's try these capacitors now. That looks better. Because we had a dead short on those uh, capacitors before, and now it seems that the uh, short has gone. Let's try these other ones. Cool. Right. So it looks like we need to order two parts. Then it looks like that diode's gone and that IC. Uh, and I also need to change that capacitor. But I think I'll take that off. In any case, because we need to heat this area up to uh, refit this IC and to refit this diode. So I shall order some parts and then we'll continue the video from there. Right, so I've managed to get all of the uh, replacement parts now. Uh, however, the diode that I've uh, ordered uh, appears to be the wrong package size. The number on it's the same, but obviously this package size on the original one's a lot larger than the uh, than the replacement one I've got here. So I think what we'll have to do is uh, get a little bit creative with a, a bit of wire or something, and uh, it should still work. So, right, I'll bring the microscope in, and uh, we'll start soldering these parts back in. So I'm going to start by uh, just heating the area of the board up. I've just added a bit of flux there, and then. Uh, We'll wait till the solar melts and then we'll try applying the chip.
Right, I think we'll give that a bit of a clean up. And then we'll look to put this uh, diode on. I think I'll just use the iron for this one. I think I'll give this area a bit of a, a bit more of a clean up. Let's get rid of this uh, flux residue. And we've still got this uh, capacitor to solder in. So. Alright, so I'll get the microscope out of the way and we'll solder that in from the other side. Yeah. Also uh, remove the board from its casing, so it's a little bit easier to work on. Alright, so hopefully that should be it. So we'll put it back in its case and, and we'll give it a try. Right, I'm just going to see if I can find a CR2032 just to go in there. Uh, where to put the power switch? Yeah, here it is. Right, I'll switch it off here yeah, for the moment. Where's the power lead? Uh, here it is. Right, are you ready? Are you confident? Let's uh, see what it does. And Oh, a little power light. And the fan's gone. You can see the green light down there. So that's a promising start. Right, I'll uh, hook it up to uh, a TV and see if I can uh, get any display or anything on it uh, back in a more. Right, so I've got an HDMI lead plugged in. So let's uh, switch it on and see what it does. Yes, we've got a picture on it. Now, I don't know if it'll do anything uh, else apart from that, because we haven't got a, a hard drive plugged in here. So, it might just sit on this screen now, I don't know. I'll just give it a minute and see if it does anything else. But, oh, the picture's gone off now. Oh, there we go. Video loss. A screen that supports 4K resolution has been detected. Do you want to set this resolution? And obviously the date's wrong at the bottom and that and stuff, but yeah, it, uh, it appears to be working. Right then, I think uh, my friend's going to be over the moon with this. Uh, now we'll put it up and running again. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.